Thousands of people are suffering in Flint, Michigan. Fingers are being pointed everywhere, but whose fault is it really? This is the story of Flint and its struggle for fresh water. Just because you live in a freshwater region doesn't mean you have access to fresh water. The Flint water crisis started back in 2013 when the governor, Rick Snyder, appointed an emergency financial manager to decide things for the city. The city of Flint was once connected to the Detroit water system, but Governor Snyder wanted to save money for the city, so they switched systems. Flint wasn't always a poor city. In fact, it can be argued that the American middle class was born in Flint. The 40-hour work week and overtime pay were a direct result of sit-down strikes in Flint during the 1930s. Back in the 1950s and 60s, General Motors' business was booming. More than 80,000 people in Flint had reliable, high-paying jobs. It was normal for people to do well in Flint. The only problems that they had were overcrowded neighborhoods, traffic congestion, and the demand for jobs in the growing workforce. Today, the city is struggling with problems which are totally opposite. People are leaving, jobs are just about gone, and now the Flint water crisis. It was April 16, 2013. This is when the city switched water systems. Most people in Flint trusted the government of Michigan, especially Governor Snyder. Snyder thought and told the residents of Flint that this would help the city save money. The EFM would make this decision for them. The city was supposed to save millions of dollars from the switch. The only downside of this transition, or so they thought, was that the city was going to have to wait three years to move to a new water system. Because they switched, they would need a new source of water to use until they got hooked up to a new one. So they started to use the water from the Flint River. It's June 12, 2014, and the city officials just informed Flint that they are going to start testing and treating the water. They are planning on using lime to coat the pipes. At the time, no one knew there was lead in the water. During this time, residents of Flint started to buy water bottles. The mayor says, I think people are wasting their money buying bottled water. To prove his point, he even drank a glass of Flint's water on live television. January 4, 2015. Residents of Flint are told that the city's water contains a high level of distinctive byproduct. This means that it is in violation of the Safe Drinking Water Act. The Safe Drinking Water Act was passed in 1974. This act established to protect the quality of the drinking water in the United States. On February 26th, the city's decision shocks the people of Flint and the rest of an outraged nation and admits to lead in the water. The city is forced to explain to the people that they have violated the Safe Drinking Water Act. Still, Mayor Dwayne Walling is telling and tweeting that the city doesn't know why the people are of Flint won't drink the water. Me, my wife, and kids use the Flint water at home, in work, and at school, says Walling. By July 22nd, the city officials are finding higher levels of lead going through the pipes each month. About 10 days later, an epidemiologist for the state health department identifies a three-month spike in lead levels in Flint. Over the next few months, the crisis becomes a national story. People from around the state are hearing about it more. It is starting to become headlines in newspapers and talked about on all social media. Months have passed and the crisis is starting to go nationwide. Virginia Tech students are now being taught how to test for lead. Now, 42% of 120 samples of water are contaminated with lead. Soon after this, the Attorney General has told the people of Flint not to use the water from their taps. Now, most of the residents of Flint are starting to use water bottles for cooking, drinking, and to bathe children in. And for the people that couldn't afford so many water bottles, are being asked to put water filters on their taps. The city of Flint told the people that it would take about $1.5 million to replace or clean out all of the pipes. Most people from around the nation have been questioning Governor Snyder's decision to switch water systems. It seems like the city is now spending more money trying to fix the problem that they have now created by trying to save money. So, should we listen to the government, or should we listen to the thousands of families suffering in Flint? It seems like every tra time we try to fix a problem, we add a new one. Take the water bottles, for example. What are we supposed to do with all of the plastic bottles around the community? Val Washington states, the bottled water giveaway is better than nothing, but to me, it's like putting a Band-Aid on an amputation. Any of the choices that the politicians make affect the present and the future. They will have different consequences. And now, after all of the productive years in the past, this is how we prove to people that Flint is a great city in Michigan. People from around the world thought it was a little frightening by how this courageous decision was made. Other people are worried about different cities that might be in financial trouble as well. The Flint water crisis isn't over, but there are many ways that we can help. 
and whatever the residents of Flint do for the city, and whatever the governor decides, will affect the whole city, positively or negatively.